Okay, we're sitting here at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame on the day that the Vans Warped Tour exhibits opening, and we're in Cleveland, and why would we not be in Cleveland and not have Mike Shea here? Mike Shea, founder of Alternative Press Magazine, which has been with us, and I've been trying to think overnight how, I know why I ended up wanting to work with you, but I'm trying to figure out what year that was. 98, 97, 1997, so we only missed, what, three? Yeah, two or th two years. Yeah, two? so for yeah. two years, uh, and for me, it was uh, when there was Rolling Stone and Spin, and when I started this, they would not pay attention to our bands, they would not pay attention to our music scene, and those were the two big magazines. So you naturally mm -hmm. reached out to them, and they were talking about Lollapalooza, and they were talking about Horde and Ozfest, mm -hmm. and they wouldn't, you know, they put like a little two lines down. And mm -hmm. then we met, and I'm, I don't know if it was over. It was in the Lollapalooza '96 program. Because we did that program, I think. weren't you involved with that one? Yeah, I was in. I was on that tour. Yeah. No, you know, no, not ninety six. I was 96. not nine. No, nine. I was gone that way then. Warp tour started nineteen ninety five. Okay. I was involved with Lollapalooza until nineteen ninety four, and somehow we connected. And I go, wait a second, they're they're talking about our bands. This is an, actually a magazine mm -hmm. that's talking about the music that I want to support. Mm -hmm. So I know we we somehow connected. <laughs> And that might have been through Eileen or Car or yeah, I don't know, some Carrie like Lee or someone yeah, we connected, yeah, yeah. and we decided that we would put out a program. And uh, part of the exhibit ups upstairs are many of the programs that you produce for us. Oh, that's awesome! That's yeah. really great. So that's obviously, really great. Mike has not been there for the ribbon cutting this morning. We were having a late night dinner there. <laughs> but so, Alternative Press Magazine, you've just celebrated an anniversary just a couple days ago. Uh, Thirty-four years, two days ago. So long time, long time. Yeah. So. And, and, and staying in Cleveland. I mean, how many yeah. times have people said that you could not be in Cleveland and be successful? <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, well, the good thing about Cleveland and being out of the Midwest, whether you're in Detroit or Pittsburgh or Columbus or anything like that, as you know, is it's inexpensive. So if we were trying to do what we did out on the West Coast, we would have been wiped out decades ago because it's just so expensive. And uh, so it's really allowed us also to kind of pivot when we needed to based upon economic trends or industry trends or whatever. So you're like a 34 year old hipster because now the hipsters are finding Cleveland and they're making pickles. There's olive tasting rooms pickles. in Cleveland. There's actually a winery in Cleveland. So people are finding that the rents are cheaper in Cleveland and you can't really make them in Silver Lake or in Williamsburg anymore. So like you, you know, you're, you've been like the basis of the hipster Cleveland forever, realizing that low rents yeah. allow you to be creative. Yes. Yeah. Well, and also allows you to have people be able to kind of start in with your company and grow up with it. And then they can, if they want to go on with their careers and so forth, they can. So it's been a really, AP is a good place to start, which is how Warped Tour has been. Yeah. Same way. I, I feel like we've always been that, you know, and AP Magazine has always been able to give a platform, not only, like you said, to journalists and young writers, but, you know, gave a band a chance to, you wrote about mm -hmm. bands. You, mm -hmm. you weren't um, necessarily dependent sometimes on a publicist. Right. Uh, to turn you on to music. I think that a lot of that comes with Jason Pettigrew in yeah. some ways. Jason yeah. Jason is a music nerd. The first thing I see with him yesterday when we had dinner was anyone underground I, I should know about or anything I should know about about music. He, he's still that person. I mean, mm -hmm. so I, are you and Jason the two last original members? <laughs> it's like a Motown group. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, Jason came in with, I mean, we started in 85 and Jason started with us with issue four, which was by September of 85. And he was writing record reviews and being curmudgeonly already. He was already at 34 years ago. He was about eight. No, yeah, when he was about, starting. No, 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 no. He was about 40 at that point. So, uh, so yeah, yeah, he's at 84 and you know, just rolled the curmudgeon on. <laughs> right, right. But we love exactly. Jason. And, yeah. you know, it's one person you can always uh, talk music with. So, oh, okay. so uh, AP Magazine, 34. You think there's another 34 in you? Oh, God. You know, I didn't even know we were going to do 34 in the first place. So I think it's sometimes better just to kind of put the blinders on and keep plowing forward and see where everything's going to go. You know, the good thing about it is that what you've done with Warp Tour and, and everybody's done with Warp Tour is you've allowed to kind of bring this group of really great musicians that would never have been known. And like you said, the dismissiveness of the industry, dismissiveness of the press and so forth. And we were getting that all the way through the 2000s and everything through the rising emo and so forth. I mean, we we had people that worked in major media outlets around the country telling our editors, like, why are you writing about this silly goth, you know, hot topic stuff? And they were really dismissive about it. But now, uh, what the really awesome thing is, is that like, you guys, are, you, your brand is everywhere. You've built all these bands out, and we're still going, and it's, and they're all 
they don't they're not around anymore so it's like there's something about this dedicated fan base of kids and fans out there that really makes all of this music you know for that fan out in the suburbs with the pink hair or the purple hair that's like that's this is their community and we don't have purple hair anymore. I think no, we both started out 30 right. many years ago. This is my 30, uh, I was trying to figure it out, my 39th year in the business now. Wow. Entering my 39th year in the business since I put on my first show. Wow. So, uh, you know, it's, it's been a long run. And we're here. And it's so fun to be at the Rock Hall. I guess it's their uh, 20, 25th year, too. And uh, we're all... Uh, wow. So, uh, you know, the years go fast, and, uh, but, you know, you, you have a few friends in this business. And one of the, uh, the, the what I'd like to say, Mike, is uh, you've been a true friend. We have conversations many times outside of the business <laughs> about things. And uh, it's, it's great out. to celebrate this day here. And I'm sure we'll be all watching bands later today. Oh, yeah, big time. Getting a nice tan. Getting a nice tan. Thank you for wouldn't coming be a warped on. Tour without the it wouldn't camp. be a test. Sunburn. I saw you saw a few people walking around. You see, people who work now in offices are out here for this 25th anniversary, and they all walking around with sunburns yesterday. I, Christy Van Doren's up there, and she started when she was 17 years old, and she's got children. She was up there setting up the booth for vans with her dad. Steve Van Doren's up there, uh, I, and we were just talking. And, and isn't that kind of the point? This is like a family, right? Because so many people grew up with Warped Tour. I mean, literally grew up. I mean, you know, talk to some of the people, like even some of the people that work in the main office, production office with you, like you started so much younger and now like they're we're, like, it's awesome. That's what makes it so much like a Yeah, and I had to get away from the front doors because, you know, the Rock Hall knows how to run their venue, but it's a little different. But the first 10 people at the front door came up and started running up and asking me questions this morning about how's the passes gonna work? Where do we go? I'm like, <laughs> oh my gosh, this isn't quite the thing. And it'll never change. It'll never end. It'll never change and it'll never be great. And I'm sure we're gonna be hanging out in some parking lot in America or doing something in the future. So thanks, Mike. Thanks for all the support all these years. Thank you. Thank you very much, AP Thank and all the crew and Jason. It's great that he started out Cremudgeity because <laughs> all music writers become Cremudgeity yep. no matter how positive you are. No. But Jason was there at the beginning, right. a curmudgeon, and we love that curmudgeon because he never changed. Nope, nope, never changed. Signing off from the Rock Hall. <laughs>